Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to review another store-bought pizza that's keto-friendly. And we will start this quest right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos. We do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time we upload upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So today we're going to fulfill a uh, subscriber request. I'm a little nervous about this one. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to this one. So we're going to review Quest Pizza. Several subscribers have messaged us saying, hey, can you guys go try the Quest Pizza? And uh, yeah, we haven't had much luck with store-bought keto-friendly pizzas. The best I can say right now is it's not real good. <laughs> It's not real good foods. <laughs> well, if you're new to our channel, recently we were doing a Walmart video mm -hmm. on different products in Walmart, and we came across this, so we picked it up. I will leave a link for that video right over Rachel's head, um, as well as... Uh, yeah, we've reviewed a lot of the different Quest, uh, not Quest, uh, real good pizzas, yes. and we didn't think any of them were really good. Yeah. The name was so, not yeah. Fun. So we're going to try this one. I've heard better things about this one. Uh, so what we're gonna do, the way we do all of our review videos now is we put everything through a five things review. We start off with tasting it, and then when we do the five things review, we're gonna review the nutrition and everything else like that. So on the back here, there is a little bit of copy. It says, feed your craving, say hello to Quest Thin Crust Pizza, craveable cheese, sauce, and toppings, blanket, a custom crust recipe that begs you to grab another slice. Welcome back to the pizza cravings. Is it gonna beg us to Okay, I'm pick trying up to not slice. look at the nutrition. So we have to put this into an oven for 400 degrees. Uh, remove the pizza from a box, discard the freshness wrap and the cardboard tray, place it on a baking sheet 20 to 23 minutes. So we are gonna go cook this and we'll be right back. Okay, I have bad news. I overcooked it just a little bit, but in my defense, it said 20 to 25 minutes and I had it in there for 15 minutes. Oh, So. well wait, then that should be less. I know. It should be undercooked. So that's what it looks like. It's actually not super bad. We actually like it a little bit crunchy. I do. Okay, I have worked really hard to not look at the nutrition label. Okay, so we need to taste it first. So we're gonna taste it, but I have no idea what we're eating. We could, for all I know, be eating 12 carbs here. I doubt it. I mean, they kind of know what their audience is, don't they? Well, it's, they're not just a keto company. Okay. So that's what we got. I, it's actually got, like, the crust isn't, like, yeah. super bad. It's not, like... I don't know what's the right word. Moist. <laughs> it's not. It's not like yeah. It's not falling apart. It Rubbery. Kinda, no. Well, we haven't tasted it yet. You ready? The flavor, the sauce, and the cheese is actually pretty good. Not bad. It's kind of reminding me, you probably never did this, because I grew up up north. When we used to go skiing as a kid, my sister would remember this. I did not go skiing as a kid. When we would go skiing, when we wanted to warm up, we would go inside and they would have pizza. Like you can buy just like, you know, kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese kind of pizza. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what it's like. It's it, not horrible. I mean... To, to I mean, it's not New York style pizza. Dear Lord, no. Or Chicago deep dish. Um, it just reminds me not to be like the fancy skiing background that you have, but like Saturday morning with the microwave tastes like the Totino's party pizzas that are like 99 cents. What was your favorite pizza growing up? Like just quick pizza to throw in the oven. Yeah, that. Like those like oh, no. you know we party had? pizzas. We had Elio's. Remember mm. the square ones? They came mm -hmm. in a rectangle and three pieces. But those were a thicker crust. And you were supposed to have three, each one was supposed to be a piece and my sister and I would just eat like the whole sleeve. So this definitely cooked up like the party pizzas I remember because one bite will be crunchy. I have to tell you, I could actually eat this whole thing. And the other bite will be like 
not crunchy. <laughs> Soft. Okay. So you want to put this through five things? Five things. Five things. So if you're new to our channel, we review all products based on five things. We're going to talk about the ingredients. Does it keto based on a nutrition label? How does it taste? How much does it cost? And finally, would we recommend it? Okay, so here we go. We got the box right here. This is what the box looks like. And uh, we're going to start off with number one, the ingredients. That the, is a daunting list back there. Okay, the ingredients are water, low moisture mozzarella cheese, which is made out of pasteurized milk, cheese culture, salt, and enzymes. And we have milk protein isolate, tomato paste, uncured pepperoni with no nitrates or nitrites added, except for those that naturally occur in celery powder and sea salt. Okay. The reason it looks so long is because they're explaining everything that's in everything. Is there a lot of celery powder So in pepperoni? Uh, they're going to use that for uh, curing it. Instead of the nitrites, the nitrates, they're going to use celery. That That's why. That's interesting. Okay. So now we have a list of what is in the pepperoni, what the pepperoni is made out of. It is pork, sea salt, spices, sugar, lactic acid, starter culture, natural flavoring, celery powder, spice, um, spices, paprika, cellulose, high oleic sunflower oil, soluble corn fiber. Hmm. So that is all just the pepperoni. Oh. So it's actually not super bad. Okay. Okay. Then we have Pecorino Romano cheese, which is pasteurized sheep milk, cheese cultures, salt, and enzymes. Then you we have sheep milk? Yes. That's pretty good. Citrus fiber, which, and then it contains less than 2% of whey protein isolate, extra virgin olive oil, sea salt, garlic, oregano, black pepper, basil, onion powder, cayenne pepper, yeast, baking soda, xanthan gum, and sunflower lecithin. Okay, with that many ingredients, I'm sort of expecting like a really high quality slice of pizza. Yeah. And they've achieved a party pizza from Tortino's or whatever for 99 cents. But it's not bad. I mean, the, there's the not ingredients bad ingredients aren't bad. It's again the reason that the list is so long is because they're telling you everything in there. If you really want to nice. get into what the ingredients are, it's cheese, milk protein isolate, tomato paste, pepperoni, um, Romano cheese, and spices. That's what's in it. Okay, That's they're just. Good. I like a company that breaks down everything, even Me too. if it means that the li the list is longer. The pepperoni has the worst ingredients in it, which yeah. is honestly normal. Right. Okay. So the ingredients are actually not super bad. And actually the tomato sauce isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah. So it's tomato paste. So number two, here we go. Does it keto based on a nutrition label? And I have not looked at this. <laughs> so a, there are two servings in this box. So this pizza is two servings, which actually is not bad compared to a lot of the other ones we've seen. No, because, I mean, it is like the size of a personal pan pizza, but um, but I can see them making it into two. Okay. 340 calories per serving. Okay. Actually, they even break it down for the whole pizza. Oh, nice. 690 calories if you eat the entire pizza, which, which most you, people You're will. going to. 21 grams of fat, 25 total carbohydrates, 28 grams of protein. The carbohydrates then have 19 grams of dietary fiber. So wow. that's going to make it six net carbs for a half of the pizza. Okay, 12 if you eat the whole 12 thing. 12 if you eat the whole pizza. It's a little high in the carbs. It is, even net. Even net, it's a little bit high. But again, you're also looking at what's in it. If you go and get a keto crust pizza from Blaze Pizza, True. when you add on tomato sauce and all that other stuff, you can add it up. I think when we went and did that review, if you haven't seen that, we went to Blaze Pizza and tried the new keto crust. I'm going to leave a link for that over Rachel's head. Mm -hmm. I want to say when we did it, it was like top of my head, 15 net carbs. And that was with no sauce. But that was also like most of our meal for the day. But we got every single ingredient yeah. you can get on it. Oh, it right? wants to stay with you. Oh, I did? Okay. Flavor so, saver. Yeah, the tomato sauce is usually going to add to your carbs and stuff like that. But if you're just looking for a pizza treat, yeah. it's not horrible. Or you're on the road and you're trying to grab yeah, something. Yeah, that's, that's more of where I go. Because you could totally microwave this, I'm sure. Yeah. I probably wouldn't. For At home, I'm going to make my own. But if yeah, if you're on the road, oh, if, yeah. if we're going someplace and you've got a hotel and you want something, it's not a bad option. Okay, so yeah, keto, it does technically keto. Carbs are a little bit higher than I'd like them. Yeah. Okay, so number three, how does it taste? It actually tastes I'm gonna eat this. more like a bread crust than a lot of the things that I've seen on the market. Right? Like, it doesn't, I don't 
pick this up and think instantly almond crust or they've made this with just cheese or coconut flour or something like that. It tastes like a party pizza, a um, microwave pizza that you probably enjoyed you know, Saturday mornings watching cartoons and... I am going to say, the crust is shocking me. Yeah. it. I mean, it's obviously not a deep dish pizza. No. But as far as like a store-bought pizza, it's actually a crust. Like it's, like you can see, it crumbles. It falls apart. It doesn't, obviously there's no gluten, so it does crumble. But it reminds but it me of what I'm used to. it gives you that texture, yeah. right? I think taste-wise... It's not bad. It's, I'm, let's face it, it's not the most awesome tasting pizza you've ever had in your life. No. But for a store-bought frozen pizza, it's not bad. It, I, I will say it kicks real good foods, but. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as far as taste goes and the fact that like it's not got some sort of strange crust. And especially when you consider it's made with protein powder. That's what it's made with, right? Shockingly. It's made with protein powder. Mozzarella cheese and protein powder. So it's not super bad. Yeah. Okay, so number four, how much does it cost? Here's where I'm afraid we're going to, <laughs> like, end our relationship with this. Um, we found it in Walmart. Yes. And I believe we paid um, $7 for this. $7. $7. Now, they have totally perfected the $1 pizza. <laughs> But it's for seven dollars, but it's going to cost you seven dollars. Yeah, I feel like seven dollars is pretty high. I like the accessibility. I like the fact that I could go into a Walmart. Chances are, if I'm on vacation someplace, I could find a Walmart. So I like the fact that it's accessible. But seven dollars—that seems like a lot. Um, I feel like for seven. dollars This is where I'm going downhill because I was really good up to this point. Yeah. You know, not necessarily, not something I would necessarily buy or even keep in the house. But like you said, on the road in an emergency, yeah, grab it. Uh, Seven dollars to me is a lot of money, especially when I can go to Blaze Pizza and pay seven or eight dollars for a Blaze Pizza and just scrape all the toppings off, mm -hmm. be it lower carbs, and have a lot more food. But not everybody has a Blaze pizza. But there are a lot of... Now, if you haven't seen that video, in addition to trying the keto crust, we also went to Blaze and ate it keto-fied with just no crust. And I'll leave that link over Rachel's head because that was awesome. I, I want to say we were like eight or nine carbs on that. Delicious. I mean, and the amount of food we had was ridiculous. But yeah, you may not have a Blaze pizza, but pretty much all over the country now... You have those new, um, those build your own pizzas. Places, right. Where you can, they may not be Blaze, but they're Mod Pizza. Pyology. Pyology. All of pie. those different places where you can kind of get it you the way you want and then just literally scrape everything off. I and mean, to toppings. me, you're better off going to Costco and getting a Costco pizza and scraping everything off and throwing out the bread. Probably if I'm in the $7 mark on vacation, for the most part, unless I'm just exhausted and I don't want to leave my hotel room, I would probably try to find a burger place yeah. and just get a burger on but the But I'm road. saying if you want pizza flavor, I just think the cost of this, when you look at something like a Blaze pizza, and again, that's $8. And if you want the keto crust, if you want the full crust experience, it's $4 more. So what is that, $12? That's only a couple dollars more than this, but you're going to get a much bigger pizza. And the entire pizza, if you take out the bread sauce and just load up your toppings, you're going to eat the entire pizza for like 10 net carbs, which is going to be the same amount as this, a lot more food. But I've got to say, the grab and go and the accessibility makes it you know, interesting. And if maybe someplace like... Walmart or Publix did a buy one, get one deal. I don't know if they're accessible. Yeah, on maybe, maybe on a buy one, get one, I might have a couple just to stick in the back in a quick emergency. But for the most part, I'm not going to buy it. And I would rather my kids probably eat this as a frozen pizza than like the traditional Totina's pizza that That's we true. grew up with. Well, I think we've pretty much covered it, but we will hit it one more time. So number five, would we recommend it? I absolutely would. I, mean, I wouldn't. I think that there's a place for this, um, not in my everyday life, but definitely a better option than some of the other frozen pizzas that are out there as far as ingredients go. And um, 
I think that it actually tastes pretty good. So for me, I'm gonna say, if you're gonna hold my feet to the fire and say you gotta buy like a frozen pizza, yeah, okay, go ahead and buy it. But I think when you factor in the cost and the carbs, I wouldn't buy it. I think that the when the, first of all it's expensive, and then add in, I'm not satisfied with half of this. No. So no. now I'm eating the whole thing, which means I'm eating. Not only am I eating 12 net carbs, I'm eating 50 total carbs. That is something. 50 to think about. total carbs. 50 total carbs is my limit. It has always been my limit. You know, even before like we kind of split up, you know, net carb, total carb, and did total carbs based on store bought things. That's it. If I ate this, I cannot have a carb anywhere else in the day. Like yeah. not in a vegetable, not in a zip fizz, nothing. And that's my upper limit. When you say it like that, then yeah, then I would probably now that's it's knocked down another ring yeah. on that ladder because um as far as, wow, I really want this to be my, you know, celebration meal, you know, where you're like, boy, I'm just going to bring it right to the brink of what my total, you know, carbs are. This is not what I'm going to be celebrating with. Okay. How about this or an entire pint of Rebel ice cream? Okay. Ice cream. Okay. The Rebel ice cream, the entire pint will be less total carbs. Be higher in calories, but less total, but not much higher in calories. Maybe like two hundred more calories. We would be having ice cream for dinner, and I feel like it will take you a lot longer to eat it. So, but again, not bad. I'm not going to knock anybody to have it. I just can't recommend something that costs seven dollars and is giving you twelve net carbs or fifty total carbs. Because let's face it, nobody is eating a half of this. Like we're going to finish this, I think. So, oh, of course. So, well, that is our video for today. Do us a favor. Let us know down in the comment section if you've ever uh, tried the Quest pizzas, and I know they had a couple of other flavors too. Mm -hmm. And we picked up what I think was probably the lowest carb one, because yeah. they had a vegetable one. I, I can only assume that's gonna be higher in carbs. And it's gonna have a lot of like freeze dried broccoli on it. <laughs> so that is our video for today. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.